which is the 2017 Brazil general strike. Uh, Brazil had a general strike in 2017 where they shut down the whole country for like a day. Uh, for a whole day, they shut down the whole country. And this was in, in regards to uh, labor reforms. And what these labor reforms were doing were they were increasing the age of retirement from 55 to 65. And then they were changing the way that pensions were going to be done because pensions are no longer... Uh, going to be equivalent of the wages that you get at the end of your career, right? Uh, at the time of retirement, uh, they are going to be a median of uh, of all of your wages that you have had throughout the years. Uh, and in order for you to even get that, you have to be in the workforce for 49 years. And uh, that's crazy um, because now it's essentially like you've lost half of your pension. You've just lost half of your wages out of out of pension. Uh, so people got pissed and then not only that, but they were also going to increase the work day from eight to 12 hours. And then they were going to cut the lunch break from an hour, an hour and a half down to 30 minutes. And this was a labor reform that was done by, uh, uh, what Timor, uh, Timor was, uh, put into power. He was Dilma Rousseff's VP, Dilma Rousseff. She got impeached over, um, uh, uh, corruption and financial, um, financial corruption charges specifically. And, uh, so he was her VP and he, he, he took power and he was like wildly unpopular. It was wildly unpopular. I mean, he was putting reforms like this out. So there was a general strike in April of 2017, where they shut the whole nation down. This was led by labor unions and student marches, and there was demonstrations, and people were marching around the city, and they shut the whole fucking city down, right? Like, banks weren't open, no public transportation was open, stores weren't open, government employees didn't show up. Um, and, you know, there was back and forth on, on how different uh, government leaders handled it, where there were some government leaders that were like, hey, fucking go do it, man. Like, yeah, if, you, if this is what you feel like you need to do to fight for your rights, then go fight for your rights. I support you wholeheartedly. And there were other government leaders that were just like, fuck you. How dare you? This is an insult to everything this country stands for. You know, like, you're going to be docked pay. You might be fired. This is bullshit. And they just, you know, lost it. So most of the, most of the demonstrations were pretty peaceful. Uh, most of the demonstrations were pretty peaceful. Uh, there was one student that got shot and had to be put into the ICU. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then after this, there were a bunch of right wing leadership that was just like, never happened. Never happened, bro. What strike? What are you talking about? I've been at work all day. You know, I've been working hard. I've been kicking ass, taking names. What happened out there? I don't know. I don't know. Sounds like it's all fake news to me. You know, people strike the country. Nah, it's crazy. That, nobody would do that. That's not a thing that happened. So they just kind of rewrote this narrative, right? But here's something interesting. The Catholic Church of Brazil actually supported the strike. Isn't that correct? That's wild to me. That the Catholic Church was like, yes. We do support these strikes. We do support the, the 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 labor unions. So after this, it basically relayed these, or I'm sorry, delayed these uh, labor reforms, right? It delayed them. But they tried again in June, and when they brought it back up again in June, there was another round of strikes, right? And and one of the other things that they added to this labor reform in June was that uh, that these companies, the bosses we're going to be able to negotiate directly with the workers. Uh, why is that bad? Uh, because it takes collective bargaining um, off the table. Individual workers don't have the same representation as the entire collective. Uh, this gives an opportunity, and this happens in the States quite often, um, too, is it gives an opportunity for you know um, one employee to get a different raise than another employee. Um, and creates this un unneeded, unwarranted level of competition in the workplace where, you know, uh, oh, you want that 10% raise? Well, you should have stayed at the office longer than we needed you to. You just did the bare minimum, so now we're, we're not going to give you that 10% raise. Look at this guy. He's working for free, so we're going to give him a 10% raise, and he'll still be working for free, and maybe in two years we'll give him another 10% raise. It's bullshit like that. 
uh, where they're like, oh, you can't talk about your salary because, you know, employee A might have more salary than employee B for doing the exact same job. Um, without that notion of collective bargaining in place, that's kind of what it eliminates. And this happened to me. I remember that uh, this happening to me at my very first real design job that I got when I got my graphic design degree. The first year I worked, you know, at uh, at these temp spots, shoe stores, retail shit. And I remember getting this job. It was great. It was fun. It was a really fun job. But I got paid like 20 grand a year. Um, and then I got a pay bump of after the first 30 days, because a 30 day trial period, they were going to give me 20K a year. They bumped me up to 22, which, you know, is all, I mean, all this stuff is like pittance. Like this is virtually nothing. Like I'm barely making any money. Um, but I got 22 grand. And then um, about a year in, we were like trying to talk about like, hey, how do we get a raise here in this job? And my art director was like, we're going to talk to, you know, we're, we've been producing a lot of shit. I'm going to, I'm going to get you guys like a good raise. I'm going to negotiate like a good raise. And I went and I had my individual meeting with my art director. All of us had an individual meeting with our art director. And she was like, we can offer you 25 right now. And I was like, 25, dude, this is like, this is crazy. And she was like, yeah, that's about as much as we can do. Um, you know, it'll go into immediate effect. And I was like, this is, I mean, fine. Yeah, I'll take the extra money. But, you know, like we've been working really, really hard and putting out a whole bunch of stuff. Having a little bit more than $25,000 a year would be kind of cool, would be great. And she was like, yeah, this is all I can do right now. So then I started talking to this other designer, Right. And we were going back and forth and she was like, yeah, I went from, you know, and she'd worked there a little bit longer than me. Um, so she was, I think, getting 25, but she was like, yeah, they bumped me up to 30,000. And I was like, what? And so by the end of my stay at this job, because I only stayed there, I think three or four months after that. And I remember towards the end of it, I had this interview, I got this job offer and it was like a, it was, I was basically going to make double the amount of money. Um, and that job ended up sucking real hard too. But, uh, I remember talking to my art director and I was like, Hey, I've got this job offer. Here's what they're offering me. I'm, I'm, I'm not all about the money. Um, cause I like the environment here and I like the boutique structure of this place. But I know that some of the designers are making $30,000 and I'm asking for that. And she was like, I can't give you that. Like, she was just like, I'm, they're going to say no. Like, the bosses are going to say no. And had I had a union that was that was collectively bargaining for me and not just, like, a general manager, right? Had I had, like, a, a graphic design union to go in and negotiate for us in what we've been doing and how much what we should all be getting and how much of a salary increase we should all be getting, what the minimum salary that, that the designer should be making, uh, especially after a year of being there and things of that sort, um, we would have probably gotten a little bit more money. But this direct negotiation thing is basically them saying, oh, well, you know, we'll negotiate with the employees directly. And really what it is, is we're going to tell the employees what we're going to give them and that's fucking that. It's not really a negotiation. Plus, at that point, uh, the Timor government was facing corruption charges. Uh, and there was calls for, like, fast-tracking the election because uh, there was this massive increased popularity of Lula, who eventually, we found out from the earlier story, went to prison. Um, so, you know, they, this general... I mean, it literally just shut the country down. Uh, and it was like this huge push to make this worker party um, a lot more successful, a lot more popular. And people basically were like, yeah, we are more important than the fucking oligarchs that are that are pretending to be far more important than us. So why would we not, you know, back a party or, or back movements that are all all pro worker? 
Um, now, unfortunately, that, that that didn't work out. And the one thing we can take something that we would have to look for, look look into, and look be be ready to face this opposition, is the fact that um, the right wing government essentially levied a bunch of bullshit. They essentially levied a bunch of corruption charges and planted false, um, you know, uh, false evidence uh, that you know we saw. Glenn Greenwald revealed they revealed that 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 uh, uh, Lula was set up, um, and that is something that we're we're going to have to keep an eye out for. Um, pending a general strike that comes into play, you know, labor movements become a little bit stronger. Um, the oligarchs start wavering. We're, you know, keep an eye out for corruption charges and uh, collusion and fake criminal investigations. Uh, towards these worker movements, that's something that we should we should definitely be ready for. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and you hit the share button. Uh, share this out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, I actually will be having some live stand-up comedy shows coming up, not in a, in a venue, but uh, I'm going to be doing some online Zoom stand-up comedy shows. Uh, the first one is actually going to be a special storytelling show uh, at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival, which is now virtual on May 2nd at 9.30 p.m. Uh, and then I'm going to be doing subsequent Zoom stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen revolution uh comedy show uh tickets and details of all of these shows are going to be available on my website at ramen noodles comedy.com that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com uh i hope you guys will come out and uh and check that check out those online shows uh you can check out all of my uh prior comedy videos on my website you can check out past road reflections forkful of noodles uh, the Dispatches, Taboo Table Talk, my interview podcast, uh, as well as download all of my stand-up comedy albums as well. But if you would also like to make a donation, become a sustaining member, uh, you can do so over on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Thank you so much to the people that have already donated, already share this thing, already subscribe to the channel, uh, that that hit that like button at every video. Uh, you guys are awesome. You guys are the best. We're going to get through this damn thing together, and hopefully we'll be able to see each other face-to-face -face real soon. But till then, stay safe, and we'll see you on the road.